<clears throat> agenda a meeting of the city report of health Monday, May 1st, 2017. Selectman's Chambers, Town Hall, 6 p.m. Uh, I'll take a motion to open the meeting and accept the agenda. Uh, make a motion to open the meeting and to accept the agenda for uh, Monday, May 1st, 2017. I would help. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. First things first. Schedule item. Discuss slash vote. Septic system design hearing 810-810 Country Way. Spath Engineering representing homeowner requesting multiple local upgrades and variances. How are we doing? Very good. How are we doing? <laughs> good. I'm Phil Spath, and this is Will Hill, the owner uh, of Hello, the property. Sir. Uh, and again, what we're just going to be is a repair of the uh, Title Five system. Yep. It's located, <coughs> located 810 uh, Country Way, and as you can see in this back side is a center line of a bumper, one property line, wetlands lines come around into here, 50 foot buffers, uh, floodplain. The only variable area to put it in, we're putting in a drip system right along this edge. Um, with a treatment unit, which would be a, a, a tool unit and a pump chain. You know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with drip systems. <clears throat> this is the most shallow system that you can use. You only need two foot of groundwater. In this case, we don't need three inches of the sand uh, and six inches of cover. And what it does is pumps it just like a, a regular irrigation system in, uh, in your lawn. And uh, the existing um, sewer is going into the front of the house and then either accessible we don't know exactly what's there that's going to be filled in. No really place to put in the system in this location. That's why we st stuffed it right along the side. The driveway's here? Yeah, there's a, a, a driveway. Here's, here's the major driveway, right. but there is a driveway back into here. Right. And you can't put it underneath the driveway. Yeah. Um, so what we're looking for are uh, five local library approvals in, uh, in one variance, a six level upgrade approval in one variance. First one is the, ground, the separation from property line to, uh, to the edge of the system from 10 feet to 7.2 feet. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's it. We've held five feet off, off the foundation, which are allowed in the drip to be five feet off, and that established what we need on that side. The second one is we need a, a sieve analysis in order to do the uh, this is all mostly filled within this, this area. It used to be the old wetlands. Dug it out, uh, did, did the sub analysis and now to get a loading rate to design the system. The third one we're looking for is a uh, setback from wetlands. The wetlands come right back into here. We're looking for a, 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 from 50 feet to 10.2 feet. And again, it's the only area that places it in here. We're 10 feet off that water line in this location. So what's the existing now? Just the cesspool? That's all that's being used right now? Right. That's it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if it, I, I don't really know what it is. I'm assuming it's a cesspool. Okay. Um, and that's, again, and what we're doing, we're doing is relocating the, the building sewer to come out to the back of the lot. Mm -hmm. And I'll put the system back in here. The, uh, the third, or the fourth uh, local library approval is a groundwater separation from the <clears throat> groundwater to the uh, inlet and outlet pipes of the system from, from 12 inches to zero inches. So the, the modeling was high and would be right just about at the inverts of the, the inverts of the system. The fifth one is the uh, setback from the foundation to the hoop right into here from 10 feet to 5 feet. What I want to do is push this as far back it gets higher and I want to be higher for the tanks instead of trying to put them in here and bury them too deep. So there, they're going to be uh, five feet off in the pump chamber. Instead of 10 feet, it'll be 5.5 feet. And the um, variance I'm looking for is a groundwater separation from, from five feet because of the sand to three feet, which is uh, allowed. And um, when you have the system close to the wetlands, you have to get a, a a variance. If this was outside it, you wouldn't need the variance. It'd still be allowed from five feet to three feet. And long story short, that's it. <laughs> What's right here? A uh, house. There's a house right here. The system is right in this location. Do you have any questions or concerns? No, I've, I've um, completed my initial review, 
sent some initial um, comments and questions back to, to Phil. Um, we went over the variance requirements uh, for the distance between the weapons. Right um, I think I see it maybe half a dozen times. Yeah, it's done probably wrong. You tend to do the most frequently. Trip system. Mainly you put them in a way you have high ground water, high ground. Yeah. element of that, that mountain. Right. Yeah. And matter of fact, Will owns it probably back here, and there's a drip in front of that house. Also. And this is better here. It's closer to the wetlands here than if we try to sneak it in over here, but it can't go into the driveway. Right. right. But it also puts you closer to the actual river. So you're better off. I like you're closer to a wetland than yeah. close to the river. Right. And then the, the whole purpose of the hoop, correct me if I'm wrong, is that it does provide treatment right. uh, before allowing the, the waste to go to the drip. I don't know. I think you're cool. No, I'm, I'm cool with it. And matter of fact, I was thankful for some of the explanations you gave. They were spot on. Yeah, and so it's really, really. No, there's reasons for variances, and you explained yourself well, so I, I have no issue or problem with that. And make a motion to do that. Does this need a. Uh, deed restriction or anything? It does. It, it needs a, a maintenance yeah. contract and a deed restriction, um, which will go into into effect before <coughs> we issue the certificate of compliance. And this system is also going for conservation on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I guess uh, I'll take a motion to approve it as it is with the deed restriction. Whatever else go along with it. <laughs> yeah. Nothing you can do. You know. yeah. Second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much for stopping. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, new business, director's report. Jen, that would be you. Thank you. All right. So where are we? Um, so kind of running through um, some of the numbers that I gave you, typically. Um, we have two private well applications currently before us. Um, and obviously, we'll get to the well regulations in a little while. We've had two... I'm sorry, three new complaints um, since we last um, met. Um, one was a um, foodborne related um, concern, and we had two nuisance complaints, both of which have been addressed and remedied. Um, we have um, now 10 housing cases with one reopening today. Um, we have begun the summer related work associated with food. We're starting to see food truck permits, temporary food applications, getting ready for farmer's market, and all of those things. So um, Nellie's getting ready for all of those inspections to get the, the trucks on the road this season, um, working with the Board of Selectmen for um, their um, cocker peddler licenses and, and make sure we coordinate there. Um, we have a total of five nuisance cases right now, five environmental release reviews. Uh, we have still 15 septic failures. Uh, however, it appears as though four of them are pretty close to being remedied, which is an improvement since the last time we met. Uh, three um, have been connected to sewer, which is a matter of getting kind of all the final paperwork in order. So we will be able to close them out soon. And then it looks as though a new system is about to be installed at a fourth. So starting to work through some of those things. Um, an interesting number, um, which we looked at last week, was where are we in septic, since that tends to be one of our busiest topics that spans year round. Um, as of Friday, when we put this together, um, we've issued 33 septic permits for repairs, installations, abandonments. And last year we reached that number on June 30th. Um, so it's a little, little bit ahead of schedule. Oh, yeah, heavier pace. Yes. Um, kind of the, that's what I've got for summary, quick summary of where we are. And there have been no new um, food inspections since um, since we met. Uh, we'll reconvene on those this week. We'll be talking old, old business, discussion private road regulations. All right, so I've given you a couple of new presents. Um, so my my first thing is um, I had given you um, a revised draft in two forms last time we met. One, it showed you the changes that I've made since we last looked at this several months ago, all in track changes. 
and then I gave you a clean a clean version of that if you wanted to to read it without the, the kind of chaos going on. Um, since that time, um, based on the conversation that we had the last time we met a week and a half ago, I incorporated the latest information provided by DEP on their proposed guidelines. So I was able to provide as um, an appendix a set of tables for sampling analysis requirements and then the caveat that as the private well guidelines get updated subsequent to our adoption of these regulations um, that those supersede the tables that are attached so that we don't have to come back and revisit these regulations every time DEP updates the guidelines that we follow suit with those um, not to say we wouldn't have to update for other reasons but that would be the biggest reason I think that we would need to revisit and update so what I've done in the versions that you have in front of you are again I provided you with what I'll call the dirty copy which has the um, the revisions that I provided last time still in red and the additional revisions that I've made in the week and a half since we've met also in the track changes which are red but then subsequently highlighted in yellow so you can see the two sets of revisions I didn't highlight the whole Appendix A. I've been doing it over the last <coughs> several days, um, including up to just about now. Um, so if the entire Appendix A is, is updated. So what I have for you. All right, do we need a quick copy again? So what's different from the last one that we read? All right. So, so the, the huge difference between what you took home last time and this time is I added one set I added a setback page. page five um, about separations to water supply lines um, and sewer lines which have been absent yeah. um, I added on page six um, the requirement for title five about septic systems being in failure if they are too close to leaching fields yeah. Uh, which had been absent. We didn't. Have any we didn't. So I'll repeat that again. Um, so septic systems would be considered in failure if they are between 50 and 100 feet from a private well, unless the well water tests access acceptable. And that's from Title Five. So I brought Title Five in, in to it. Uh, that was. That's um, a good old brain and um, further recommended in the private well guidelines. Just I just hadn't captured it before. Yep. Um, so page. Um, six. Yeah, page six of the dirty one. Oh, I didn't want to touch the dirty one. Kidding. <laughs> it's a little easier to follow, maybe not to read, but to at least follow the changes. So it's page six here, right. which probably winds up making it about page four. Yeah, it winds up being four on the main page right here. So it's also related to the Title V inspection requirements. So when somebody goes out and does a Title V inspection report, finds an old septic system and a private well, the inspector is required to conduct sampling of that well. And then if the well doesn't meet requirements, it can be considered a failure. So I tied the two regulations together. I guess I, I just read that and my mind was going, I'm a little off this afternoon anyways, but. Uh, yeah, but it's a no brainer, it just wasn't in there. No, I, I, I get it, but if you uh, remove the well, then the septic system would be okay if it was compliant, right? Correct. Okay. And, then, and that's all. Yes. Like you said, if yes. you found something and said, all right, right, we'll just abandon the well, then, then, then they're cool. Yes, you could abandon the well. Right. I, I started thinking mm -hmm. spike wells and this and that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, somebody whacks a well in and you know, your subject failed. That doesn't seem like No. And, and these, right. and I think the idea is, you know, where it says if an existing cesspool for the portion of an SAS, it's, you know, it's our responsibility to make sure, and the engineer's responsibility, to make sure that somebody's not installing a well, a right. new well, next to an existing system. Right. And I think we can cover that additionally through our setbacks. It's 100 feet to a leaching field and 50, yeah. I think it's 50 feet to a tank. No, so we can, we can eliminate that. Yeah. The well, the well should be a failure. 
Jack has a, a septic system. As a matter of fact, getting fresh water put in anyway. Anyways. So the transfer of property is the same as Title V. It has to be in compliance and has to be tested before they can sell a house. Is that what? So that has been adopted by yes. So it has been adopted by several communities um, and also highly recommended by DEP. Now, granted, they're recommending that for potable wells, but in situate, these regulations don't distinguish truly between a potable well and an irrigation well. Um, you want all of those wells to meet so potability. For, uh, mm -hmm. so, so for these purposes, anybody who has a private well needs to sample the well within one year of transfer. Um, and DEP is putting that well, recommendation well, together. Here you have prior to someone conveying and transferring title to real property. Yep. So it's and before it, the papers change. That's right. Right. And then within a year, too. And up to one year before, oh, before. Um, oh, you okay. transfer the property. Just like Title V, um, you can use an inspection up to two years so prior. Have, let's play this uh, double down again then. So here's somebody who's using a well for whatever purposes. The house sells. We know that that. And that obviously that test has to be followed with us, mm -hmm. kind of like the tunnel fly and everything else. You know what I mean? And is it up to us to go and monitor the person, the new owner of that house, so make sure that they keep up with testing and they go up? So, so the actual testing, so that if we jump ahead to Appendix A, um, which on the dirty version is page 17 and 18. Um, um, I think I lost part of table two. Um, so table one, I think I lost part of table two. Um, no, there it is. So table one is initially and on an annual basis, <coughs> coliform and nitrate nitrite. Table two is initially and then every 10 years. So that's the one you asking for lead. Yes. So if somebody's going to put in a new well tomorrow, assuming that these regulations were in place, if somebody was supposed to put in a well tomorrow, they would have to have their water sample analyzed for the chemicals in table one and the chemicals in table two. If they were going to sell the well two years from now, they would have to sample it for only the items in table one because our regulations say for table two, it's ten, initially and 10 years. And then if the, the new homeowner wants to go above and beyond that, that would be up to them. And do we know what an average testing costs? Um, it can be it can be a few hundred dollars for these types of things. Probably a little less. I mean, the the radionuclides um, in Table Two are probably the most costly, um, but it's it's an it is an expense. Um, radionuclides, um, um, radiation. So it is, you know, it is it is an expense, um, but it's also a protective measure for both the person selling the property and then the person moving in. So these are these are for your consideration. Um, the other big changes um, since the last version I gave you. So if I go to the the dirty version, you'll see um, a couple of references to rental properties. Um, and you'll see several references to how I tried to frame this in that you must analyze according to tables one and two in the appendix. And then as DEP updates their private well guidelines, subsequent to the adoption of these regulations, the required, the recommended parameters in their guidelines become our requirements. They supersede us. So that we stay up on the right chemicals and the right concentrations without having to come back and update our tables every two years, 10 years, or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
So, so that you'll see referenced in here several times. Um, you've already hit the selling part. Wells with treatment systems. Uh, how does that work? So, um, you, init, you have to take a baseline sample, and the results of those sample will determine whether you need treatment. Um, if you do need treatment, then you come back, you collect additional samples from the well after treatment and or from, if it's a truly a potable well in a house, from the tap that's receiving the treated water. And then um, I added in section 13, which is page 13 of the dirty one, um, a that the board has the ability to suspend or revoke any permit based on you know deliberate findings of inappropriate actions um, which I, it just gives us a little more leeway okay so yes. next plan of action yes you forward this to douglas and you want us to vote so my within a month yes into a next that's right, because I want I want all of you to be able to give me feedback. And are we pushing it out to them again, or to anybody else again, or is this all us now? I think this is all us, um, <coughs> unless unless you prefer that I send it out to no, any various no, groups. Just make it live. Um, so the way we have to do it legally is we have to publish a summary of the regulations in the local newspapers in advance of the proposed plan to adopt. So I'd like to come back to see all of you and get your feedback in the next meeting, 14th, 15th, whatever that day is, um, and then plan to have you adopt on the 31st, the last, our last meeting in May. Um, the other thing that I still need to do and try to get through it today was updating the associated application form because it requires revisions based on the revisions here for example um, we need to add a line allowing for them to determine installation repair or decommissioning um, and just kind of making it consistent um, throughout so I want to make those changes send them out to you um, and then same thing with the checklist um, I want to update the checklist for what you need to do to get your permit and then add the section down here for the checklist what you need to do to get your certificate of compliance so that it's complete from start to finish just like we did with the, aban the septic abandonment policy we created a very specific this is what you need to give us each step of the process to get to the end um, so I want to update those give those to you as well for review in advance of the next meeting and have you give me all of your feedback at the next meeting so that we can incorporate and hopefully vote on them on the 31st. <clears throat> okay, okay. All right. Uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. all right. Uh, next up, uh, additional other business, administrative invoice approvals, and meeting minutes from our last meeting of April 19th. So we can't approve the minutes at this point. Um, yep, so we'll hold them for Are those now. those the ones you emailed over to Yes. Okay. So We have a clothing allowance, and so these are my well-worn, well-loved, and beaten-down inspection shoes. Oh, I gotcha. So I replace them using okay. this funding. Gotcha. Now I get a woman in her shoes. It's amazing how you you kill them going out in the weather. All right, if there's nothing else, then I will take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. All right, so meeting adjourned. Let's do it.